In this video tutorial, we're going to learn about something called the DOM, D-O-M. DOM is short for Document Object Model. And in a nutshell, the DOM is basically a virtual map of the web page that's currently loaded in your browser. I've created this diagram of the DOM and right beside it here, on the right hand side, you have a very simple web page. And here you have a model, a diagram of the DOM. Now, this is nebulous for you now. This is, I'm sure, very confusing for you now, but give it a few minutes and you'll understand what this is all about and why it's important that you understand the DOM and why the DOM is the key to all those dynamic effects that you see done in JavaScript these days. So as I said, the DOM is basically a map or a model of a web page. So if you look at our web page here, you see we have HTML tag at the top, the HTML tag, right? This sort of encapsulates everything underneath it. So let's look at our map here, our model. You see HTML and everything falls under it. Same thing. So then you have head and you have head tags and under the head, you have meta and the title tag. So we have our head, meta, and title tags. I'm hoping that you're starting to see the tree-like or hierarchy that the model, the DOM model, represents. Let's scroll down here and highlighted in gray. All this code represents this stuff highlighted in gray here. So we see we start with the body, and the body wraps all these tags here, of course, right? So we got the body at the top of this hierarchy and underneath the body falls all these tags. So we got our paragraph, right? Here's our paragraph and we have our H1. Here's our H1 and here we have our ordered list. You notice in between the ordered list tags, we have the list item tags. And again, it's represented here in this DOM hierarchy map. You see we have our ordered list and we have our individual list item tags as well. Okay, so we have a DOM model here. This is the model, this is the map, map model, interchange it. This is our web page that this model represents. So what's the whole point of this? The point of this is that a map, like a map that you use to get around town, you know, a city map, the DOM map, allows you to get around the web page using JavaScript. JavaScript has built into it a bunch of functions that allows you to easily jump around this document object model, the DOM, to be able to do things like add new tags, change properties in the tags, add text in between tags, remove tags. It allows you, the DOM that is, combined with JavaScript, it allows you to do all those dynamic effects that uh, we see in so many web pages. So to go back and break down the meaning of the word DOM, D-O-M, DOM stands for, well, D is document. And document represents, of course, the web page, the page that's actually loaded into the browser. Object, model, I don't like to separate object alone because basically, the browser looks at a web page and conceptualizes it as being a series of objects. And so you have object model, basically object map. So essentially, the DOM is the document's object map. And again, JavaScript has all these functions that allow you to, to uh, walk around this map and to do things with this map. Before we go ahead with the document object model, I want to jump back into core JavaScript again to help you, well, to remind you about objects in JavaScript. Now, I touched off on this in a previous video, but what I want to uh, wrap up for you so you have an understanding is that, well, in JavaScript, we have objects, you know that. Something I hadn't mentioned before was that JavaScript has three basic types of objects. 
The first type of object we are not going to look at in this course, but I'm just going to mention it for the sake of being complete. You have what you call user defined objects. These are objects that you as a programmer would create yourself. We don't need to do that because that gets into advanced JavaScript. But if it's a little unclear, now if you remember what objects are, right? They're, they're just a collection of code and the code that can have um, attributes about the code, right? And it can have functions built into these objects as well. So you could create your own objects and then use those objects in your scripts. But we're not going to do that in this course. There's no need to. But I just wanted to mention it for the sake of being complete. The second type of object that you have in JavaScript are the core language objects. And we see them represented right up here in this section here. Language, we got the array, boolean, date, math, number, string. Now we've used the array object, right? Memory array object had the length property and we're able to do stuff with it. And we actually use the string object. Whenever you create a string of text, JavaScript automatically wraps it, makes it into a string object. Well, I'm not going to get into that. Again, just understand that there's this object in JavaScript, this type of object rather, that's called the core language objects. Finally, you have something called the host objects. And that would be uh, something that the browser provides. Well, not something, many things, because many objects. So we have it represented here. Now, this is where the action is for most of what we're going to do. So the navigator object, of course, navigator represents the browser. And then we have went through all these before, so you know what they are. So what you want to take away from this segment of the video is that there are three categories of objects in JavaScript. Again, you got the user defined objects, you have the core language objects, and of course you have the host objects, which basically is a fancy way of saying the browser specific objects. So you got like the document objects and the form object and so on and so forth. In the next video, we're going to jump deeper and back into the JavaScript DOM and we're going to learn about something called nodes. And then after that, it's all going to be practical, usable JavaScript. Thank, uh, thank the heavens for that. It's, uh, I hate boring people with nerd theory, but sometimes you just have to step back and do things. If any of this is unclear, you can watch the video again. But another thing you could do is maybe as an exercise, create a simple web page and then try to diagram on a piece of paper what the DOM object, you know, what the document object model would be for that particular page. So you can use this as a template for you and you can build up from that, maybe try with different tags, table tags, and so on. And I think if you did this once or twice, it will really help you to understand the, uh, the way the DOM works and how mapping a web page works. And this will actually help you quite a bit when you're writing JavaScript code that uses the DOM, which it does on a regular basis.